He reaches down with his other hand and slips some kind of ring from a belt loop without making taking his eyes off you. Making it to the eye though, that's pretty good. This place isn't so bad. Bars, markets, people. I pull most of my contracts out of the asteroid cave. We're off of godforsaken moons. He splits the ring into two perfect circles. It's hard to hit civilization when there's so much space to pass through. Who are you? Just a freelancer on a contract. He reaches over to slide the rings around your wrist. Go easy. Bye! You see a chance the moment his eyes leave you to watch the rings. You spin, knocking him away and sprinting down the corridor. Then the shot rings out, echoing off the metal. So loud it hurts your ears. A bullet hole smokes in the wall beside your head. You freeze, and Ethan closes the gap. This is a very boring routine. Trust me. I've seen it all before. Your voice changed. Was that a fake voice? Were you pretending to be whatever the hell that other accent was? Because I don't know what that was. God damn it. To the ship and home, he whistles. Go it easy. You stumble down the corridor, your hands behind you, your mind racing. We can work this out. Can we? I don't see much in the way of assets in your possession. Shame to come all the way out here just to head back to S&R right away. That tracker of yours makes this too quick. Was hoping you'd put up a bit more of a chase, you know? A running battle through the bright market, maybe. Or a holdout in low end. There's a few establishments I would have enjoyed checking out while I asked around. You walk on in the silence for a little longer, desperately trying to think of a way to escape. That it will be the death of me, that tracker. Hey, I have an idea. How about on the way back to the ship, we stop for a drink? I'm buy-in. He laughs at his own joke. I have a better idea. This better not be one of those where you do a dramatic pause and then try to jump me. Because I'm pretty tired of that happening. Although, I got myself thinking, what's the rush here? Here we are in one of the most lawless joints in the surrogate system. We're heading for the exit? Okay, here's the idea. You and me, we make a little arrangement. Here are the terms. You run, or leave, or try to abandon the eye. I shoot you dead. You plop, or scheme, you try to kill me, I shoot you dead. But... You come meet me at an establishment of my choice every few cycles and you pay my tab, I don't shoot you. You don't pay my shot, tab, I shoot you dead. Okay, I get it. That sounds good to me, like a deal. He stretches. You know, I really thought I was gonna have to kill you, but this is so much better. Click something at his belt and the rings release from your wrist. I'm gonna go see if I can find some me an old stool at the compressor club. Come see me there. He aims the handgun at you, squinting down the sight. Let me just remind you, that body of yours is one big tracker, so don't even think about leaving the eye. I'll know. Ethan turns and strides off down the corridor, slipping his handgun away. The mix of relief and terror you feel is overwhelming. What are you gonna do? Pay him, I guess. Jesus Christ, I need to make some money. You're broke! You're fucking poor! Oh my god, I have so much shit. I want to build a home. But I don't know how. I need scrap, but I can't get scrap right now. It sucks. Okay, let's find out where I need to go to do this. Oh, here. Okay. How much does he cost? I guess I can't find out until the cycle ends. He's just gonna drink for the whole time. Disable your tracker. That seems important. How do I do that? Fang has said he will disable the Essence Arb tracker if he can get to the bottom of the mystery first. Okay, is it in here maybe? I have a tracker. A cipher, I mean. Oh yeah, the Ripper. The Ripper Worm. Let's do it. Alright, I don't know what I did, but cool. Do I have any more? Okay. Hell yeah. Do it. Got another encrypted key. Alright, wake up. Hate being down there, it's scary. Can I turn stuff into you? No. I don't want to spend money. 
If I don't need to, sorry, Emphis. Go to the yard. Let's try this. Yes. Yes, queen. There's no bad here. Let's do it again. Hell yeah. Let's go to sleep. Can't really do much else. Let's just work on this for one more time. I want to fill this up. Good, 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 good. Now that won't let me do the safe one anymore. The final piece of the winter lights sit in neat piles, waiting for the collection shuttle from Havenage. Dragos is managed to sell the remaining pieces to the shipyards, a fact that's hard to forget as he has been telling you about it for the past two cycles and all that remains is Havenage to come collect. You look around at the yard, transformed from when you first arrived. The mostly repaired drones flit back and forth, no longer buzzing unevenly or lost in dark corners, and the scrap is sectioned, sorted, the system that you and Dragos have put into place over the past cycles paying off. We're killing it. I did not search the stuff at all, though, so I did not get any clues. As you look, you notice the glow of pale light from the office by the entrance. That run-down cab of a building which houses all the records and spare equipment. Dragos must be inside, and you get to your feet and walk over to, f to find out when the shipyard collection crew will be here. I'm going to just walk in. I want to find out what he's doing. You swing open the door and Dragos flinches. Sleeper! Haven't you here yet? He busies himself at his desk. The shipyards told me they'll be here soon. Then they'll hand over the shits. The, sh the shits? Don't hand me shit. The chits and we are set. He writes something with a stylus on his slate and shuts it off. Of course, we should be talk We should talk about a bonus. Um... What were you just writing right there? Are you being fishy? He stands and turns to face you. His face placid. Uh oh. Look, I don't know when the next job is coming in, but this should tide you over for now. Okay. Presses the chits into your hands. I've done well by you, and you've returned the favor. He strains up and clears his throat, and you realize he has prepared what he is about to say. What is going on? These chits are for you to take and do what you will with them. They are from me, and they are the last I'm going to give you. Oh no, Dad, what? You don't love me anymore? You're kicking me out? No. There's no more work for a sleeper in this yard. I'm sorry, but that's it. No, I love you. Don't abandon me. I have so many abandonment issues. I don't need this. You stay in the container as long as you need, but the yard is done with you. What do you mean? Don't press me, sleeper. This is for your own good. The glassy aperture uh, of Dragus headset betray no emotion. You need to stay away, sleeper. He pauses, considering his words. Trouble is gonna follow you here. Trust me. What do you know? Dragus kicks at the floor, frustrated with himself. I'll not be saying any more, sleeper. Dragos suddenly grabs you by the shoulder and drags you out of the office onto the yard. What's happening, Dad? Dad, don't do this. Don't do it! He turns you to face the stack of pieces from the winter light, dissected, cut down, totally unrecognizable as a ship. Oh, I should have finished the other thing before I cut the whole entire ship apart. I see now. You came through that, sleeper. That should have been you, chopped and stacked. Oh, he loves me. He doesn't want me to die. That is what happens here. We cut down broken machines and move them on. Well, I didn't cut you down, but I'm sure as hell moving you on. Moving you on before whoever killed that ship out there comes to kill me. Oh, so you're doing this selfishly, Dad? You selfish? You don't want me around because you're scared? Okay. Fine, Dad. I don't want to be around you then. I don't want you to die, but also, fuck you. Kill both of us. These ships, they don't get decommissioned. They didn't break down on a dry dock. You think they'd look like that if they did? Someone ended them. That means someone tried to end you, sleeper. And I'm done waiting for them to turn up. We've had our fun, now it's time. They already did show up, I just have to pay him. Go on, he turns and walks back to the office. That's it. He misses me, he loves me, he doesn't want this, but 
But he's a selfish bastard. The silence hangs in the air, and you have with your pockets filled with clinking chits and a strangely hollow filling in your chest. I miss you, Dad! How much did you give me? I failed the drive because I didn't get all the stuff. Fuck. I hate my life. I didn't realize it would end. I thought the cycles would continue. I feel like this is going to end like, like Way of the Samurai. You are no longer needed here. Who are you? Didn't you hear me? You're nothing but a coward. Get out of my sight. Why? Because I gave up? Okay, I'm buying. Give me my stabilizer. How do I use it? As you quickly leave the surgery, eager to be away from Toshiro's glare, you notice something wrapped around the stabilizer vial clutching tightly in your hand. You open your hand and a thin film marked with holes and sigils unrolls from around the vial. At one end, it has a hard metal strip, a handle. Spec the handle. The metal handle is worn and pitted, but you can see a set of numbers imprinted into it. 207F and then crudely scratched into the handle at some lower data date low end you hold the cloudy film up to the light it is perforated with an ornate pattern of holes you can make out a word among the markings pass key is this an entry key for somewhere huh for a moment you consider going back to the surgery to return the key and then quickly think better of it. Sabine definitely gave this to me. Or is Toshira passing on a message? Time to head to Lowen and find out. You find the entrance to the apartment. It's passkey symbol. Oh, okay. So there's the passkey. But first I want to buy my house. I want to make my house. Because I've scrapped now. Make me a house, please. Oh. I need more. Fuck. Pass key. Here you go. Continue. As you push the door open, the automatic lights flicker on inside of the apartment. They reveal yellowing plastic panels. The curved shape of wall-mounted unit utility units. The detritus of the routine life arranged on every surface. You step inside, clicking the door shut behind you. The amber light of the aging fixture glazes everything with a pale orange. The work surfaces hold a variety of objects, indistinct in the dull lighting. A pale blue light drifts from the doorway at the end of the room. Smudges through the thin layer of dust suggest a recent, rare, and hurried visit. They trace a path to the water dispenser. The auto wash with the cabinet still half open. On the shelf sits an empty pill case. Okay. You cross the cramped utility room with its auto wash dispensers, water closet, towards the doorway. Through the doorway is a dark, warm room lit only by faint glow of a terminal screen. Inspect the room first. A bunk is tucked into the wall, the blankets ruffled, a wall desk glitters with rows of vials and containers, a briefcase lab sits open, loaded with rows of regents and compounds you do not recognize. In comparison, this room is clean, ordered, controlled. This must be where they're making my meds. As you approach, there is a crackle from somewhere in the dark. Sleepa! Sabine's voice shakily echoes through the apartment. Oh my god, Sabine, you welcome me you, you invited me to your house? You wanna get down? You wanna get down and dirty with the with the robo? Well I don't have a cock. That's an issue I had with my ex-girlfriend. I'm sorry. Welcome to my home. I'm sorry I can't be there. I have to make alternate arrangements. Hmm. I was able to record this message, but I don't dare show my face. Something is happening within Yatagan. I no longer trust them. Their voice becomes distant, slipping behind the background noise. I have something to ask of you. I want you to get me out. Get you out of what, Yatagan? Yatagan was supposed to hide me, to protect me, after everything happened. I was desperate, and then after that I was too tired to care. A noise like waves passes over the recording. But I'm done with them now. I want out. Screw the debt. But I need insurance something I can hold against them. 
I have my suspicions, but I can't be sure. I need information, and as you know, you need me. True, I do, or I will die. Thank you for using that against me. This isn't a threat. You have to understand my position here. It's kind of a threat. It's kind of a blackmail. I know sleepers. I have been here before. I can help you, but not with Yadagon's noose around my neck. Fair. Get me data. Everybody's asking me for help, and then they just shit me off because they don't actually love me. Dad, I miss you. <laughs> Get me data. Get me information. Get me something that I can use against Yatagan. Then I can get out and you can get what you need. Please! Waves of static cut into Sabine's voice. Bring it here. To my terminal. I'll get to it when I can. You look around the tiny room and try to imagine Sabine living here. Working at that desk. Sleeping in the bunk. Blinking into the terminal in the dark. The recording cuts to static filling the room with its white hiss, then silence. Let's try to access it again. You sit in front of the humming terminal and hit a few keys. Sabine has left an access port open, but the rest is encrypted, locked away behind passcodes. It seems Sabine might not trust you as much as they want you to think. Who does Sabine need to hide from? And what death do they owe to Yadagon? You try to assemble the pieces, but too many are missing. The only thing you know is that without stabilizer, your body will die. You glance at the briefcase lab on the desk, its glassware glinting in the dark. You turn away and leave, the door clunking shut behind you. Back in the corridor, you notice the scrawled graffiti of a blade on the opposite wall. Yadagon, uh-oh. You feel yourself being drawn into something you don't quite understand. This is fucked. Let's go work for food. Got my food, got a little bit of Cairo. I'm happy with that, let's go gamble. It's risky, I'm probably gonna lose, but I wanna try. I'm about to win. Oh no. Aw, that sucks. All right, I guess it's time to go to bed. There's nothing else I can do right now. Oh, okay, there I put it, there I put it, there I put it, okay. Let's do it. Maybe I don't need it yet. It filled me all the way up from there. Next time I'll test it a smaller amount. Okay, let's go to bed. Alright, we got quite a variety of dices. So, today, this is Fang. Okay, he's building up. Today, let's go to, ooh, the scrap guy's back. I'll deal with that later. Not right this second. First I need to go to sleep. But are there any more I can do? A two. Thank you. Okay, so this is building up. I'm leaving. I don't want to be hunted. I want to try this. Thank you. Yes. And then, I want to buy this. Aw, oh, fuck. I can't sell my scrap items, though. I need them. For this. So I want a house. I want my house. But I don't feel like I can spend money right now. Do I have data for this? Yeah, I do. Okay. All right, I got more. It's just the same thing over and over again. I don't know what the difference is, but I made some money that way. Let's do this, it's safe. Thank you, at the least I get food. You know what, fuck it. Let's just get my house. I just want my house. I know I don't have them. I shouldn't be spending money right now, but I want my house. Maybe moving will make it... Well, I have a tracker on, so he'll probably be able to find me regardless. Bye.
but I want my house. Did I not buy two? What? 